I lived in a Prius in Hawaii for two winters. And I lived in a Westphalia Volkswagen Vanagon. I've even lived in a two-door Nissan Sentra. But this time with the Odyssey, I really wanted all the conveniences and comforts that you can get with a large sprinter van, like getting a hot shower. But the true stealth of a minivan. This thing is like a soccer mom van. It doesn't draw any unwanted attention. You can park it anywhere and the police won't come a-knockin'. My name is Solstice Elliott. I have a bachelor's degree in landscape architecture, and so I've actually been formally trained on how to analyze a space and come up with design solutions. But this van took me two and a half years to come up with all of the design solutions that you'll see in this van tour. This is my kitchen galley. It's actually 88 inches from, from here all the way back to the back of the van where you can actually wash the dishes back there. Um, I started out with just a 4x8 piece of plywood from Home Depot and just had it cut by them. And this is a epoxy glazing where I got some fall leaves when I was camping last fall to put on here. And there's also some wildflowers. And all of the wood comes from that one 4x8 piece of wood. So the bottom of the bed is that and all of the walls. So this is actually like some tile backdrop here that is used as a heat guard for the stove. And it's also pretty. I just got it from the ReStore, like the Habitat for Humanity for like $1.40. And also for this, this backsplash tile over here. This sink is just used for, just to simply wash off my mug after I'm done doing coffee. Um, and this is the drinking water right here. Finding a way to run this tube from the pump down to those water tanks was a job for Super Bob. So the drinking water is stored down in here. And then this is my gray water system. This is Super Bob, my octogenarian brilliant friend. This hose runs from the sink all the way out. <laughs> and I, we had to cut a hole into the bottom of the van right here and that was quite a deal, try to get through this kind of metal. That was, that was a big, a lot of muscling it. <laughs> So we're gonna drill what are you it. What gonna do with the scissors? Right, I'm gonna use it to cut the seatbelt thing. So I just cut holes here to put cups so that the silverware can be here. I don't have like a knife magnet because I heard that those things kind of fly off when you're driving. So everything is kept in these these cups right here. Then I have drawers for my food. And this dresser drawer was really where things really started to shift because I had a first edition of this van and it was like pallets and like boxes and it was like really embarrassing even to show off my van. But then when I figured out that I needed something that could open up that was the exact width of being able to open up with the door open, I went to Ikea and everything was just one inch too wide. And then I found these like drawers that are just Sterilite drawers. And you can find a link for that in the description box. Um, they're lightweight. They're gray. And you just take an X-Acto knife and you can just pop them off and turn them around and reconfigure them however you want to work them. The drawer located beneath the bed is just reinforced with half inch metal pipe to hold up the platform for the bed. My design concept was a minimal mid-century modern design with simple lines and a platform style bed. 
The serene gray interior of the Odyssey combined with the drawers is accented with aqua blues and earthy reds. Water is my favorite element, and so all the colors are shades and hues of water, and the hints of reddish orange echo my beloved Red Rock Desert, which is my home base when I am not traveling. This is for pickling, like, it's, it's down low where it can stay cool. Like I have pickles here, and then I find that pickling is not only like healthy for you, but it's also a way to keep your vegetables and they're ready to eat on the road, on the go, and stay healthy, but then you also uh, don't need refrigeration for them. So I've lots of my spices in there, like, and the beauty of this kitchen is it's double-sided. So I can just be standing here and comfortably make food, or a friend can come by and be visiting with me while I'm making food, like either way, like it's kind of a nice dual-sided kitchen. And this is like, or it could be like a bar. And then, um, I can make food from inside. So the idea is that I can just wake up in the morning and be stealthy and not have to open any windows or anything like that and just quickly make some coffee and get on the road and get going if I want to just be stealthy. So it's, it's two options. You're always thinking about different possibilities on the van because sometimes you're outside in a beautiful campsite or sometimes you're just kind of camped out in a little, little neighborhood and you just want to be quiet and just get on the road. Back behind the passenger seat is where I keep my Beyond Quantum Healing book because I offer BQH sessions online on the road. And I also have a stepping stool here that I can use to get on top of the roof or to make as a side table. You're and then underneath the step stool is the hose for filling up the water tanks on the roof. When I first did the van, I had the kitchen back here. I thought this is the place to put the kitchen. And it wasn't until two years into like working on this van that I realized that like when I was I was I was camping with my other friend Alan and like she was like kind of using the kitchen and I had the stove temporarily up there and I was like oh this is so great like I'm inside the van and then she's over there cooking and we're kind of like in this dual kitchen mode and it was like the kitchen should go there and in this way the kitchen had a chance to be long like this. So this back here is the extension of the kitchen where you wash the dishes so I have like a little mini sink up there but this is really where the dishwashing happens. And then this area is where I put the dirty dishes. So I can either lift this up when I'm inside the van, and you know, lift this up like that, and put dirty dishes in there just to get on the road and get going, or pull it out, and then I have a table back here, that slides out, and I set that up. And then I put the sink on there, and then I run the hose over it to wash the dishes. So that's how that works. The heat on demand hot water tank is stored in this area in the back. So the way this heat on demand hot water tank works, and you can find a link to it in the description box, is like, this is minimum maximum fire. So I, it's a little too hot for me, so I'm gonna adjust it down. And this is minimum maximum water. So this is like high pressure. So more pressure actually gives you 
cooler water and less pressure is hotter. So I'm gonna go a little more pressure and that's how that works. The propane tank is stored here beneath where the laundry hamper and shower accoutrements go. It's very important to always turn off the propane when you're driving. Here I am opening it up to the hot water tank. And I used to live in a Vanagon camper and we would try to like, we'd wash the dishes and we wanted to get going and like we'd either have to dry them or like try to hang them somewhere where they wouldn't just fall off the countertop when you got done drying dishes. So I thought, why don't I just like have where the dishes dry be the permanent where they're stored. This is where they're stored. This is where they live and this is where they dry. So that's how I made that work. Originally, I had the dirty clothes hamper and the towel rack on the side of the van where the kitchen now is. Now I realize that didn't make any sense because I was running around the van trying to get ready for a shower. If this is where I'm showering, then my clothes drawers and dirty clothes hamper and towel rack should be in the back. I keep my shirts in here, extra towels, and my bottoms down in here. Beneath the bottom drawer is what I like to call a secret compartment, where I store things I don't need as much access to that often. I have extension cords to charge my solar generator, which I'll show you later on. And my blender, which is 1500 watts, so I can't run that on my solar generator. It can only go up to 1000 watts. I have the extension cords to be able to run that to a wall socket. And then to charge up the van battery, if I actually drain the van battery, because the solar can recharge my solar generator and then I can use that to charge up my van battery with the solar generator. I designed this laundry hamper slash towel rack using three quarter inch PVC pipe. Made a lot of things out of PVC. And then you just use the three quarter inch PVC clips to hold the laundry bag in place. And then I just use this Ikea bag as a fold up laundry basket to just bring my clean clothes back in from the laundry. And then it just stores underneath the other laundry hamper. So I actually have another project that it's, I mean, this van is now to a point where it's fully functional, but there's a one little extra thing that I really enjoy 
that I want to have because it's something I do all the time in a normal house, which is like, I love taking hot baths. I'm just a hot bath girl, like pretty much all the time. Anyway, so I figured out how to make a bathtub in a minivan, but you'll have to subscribe to my channel and find out more about it later. It's as if I'll do a whole video on it when I get it finished. It's almost done, so that's a secret. I'm not gonna tell you how it works. You have to subscribe. So this is my bed. It's uh, 29 inches wide and 75 inches long, so it's only like nine inches less than like a standard single bed or twin bed. Um, and I find it's perfectly comfortable. It's bigger than like a yoga mat, so. And the beauty of it is, most people when they have a minivan they have to like put up the bed and take down the bed at night and it's so exhausting like I just want to go to bed when I go when it's time to go to bed so I don't want to have to be setting up my bed and taking it back down just to get to it so it's a fixed bed it is if I want to have a couch so you can see I can just climb in I can be sitting this way my feet I just take my shoes off there's just enough room to take my shoes off I find that like a lot of people when they design their minivan they have all this floor space but that just is more floor space to get dirty if, I, if you ask me. And <clears throat> the other problem with it is is that you're, you tend to want to put things in front of your drawer so if you have your bed further back in the van and you're trying to like pull out a drawer there's all this stuff in front of it because you naturally want to set things in there because it's a, such a small space so you have to move all that stuff just to get into that one drawer because I used to have a bed that I designed like that when that was my first part of the build. As a bed like that where you just slide out boxes underneath it and it didn't work so this is better so all I have to do I can take off my shoes climb in and there's a place up here to put my shoes I put the gear hammock in front of the shoe divider to keep them from falling out and or I can just set them right here and they can just rest right there take them on and off and then the bed can be transformed into what I wanted was a meditation space. <clears throat> so you just take these two pillows from Ikea and then you can just come into lotus position. <laughs> that is awkward with my dress. <laughs> and then whatever amazing view I've just parked in front. is my view for meditating and then if I'm just having coffee meditation I can set my coffee right here and just chill right there and then I'm just chilling you know having my meditation or I have the option of putting the pillows like this and chilling this way and then I can get books out of my library and just read my book heater right here but it just slides right out and I'll show you how that works so here is what the mr. heater does to the foil insulation but if you go behind it and you touch the windshield behind it, it's totally cold. There's no heat transfer whatsoever to the rest of the vehicle. But it just goes right there, so it's easy to get out. I wanted everything to be super easy. Everything is designed in a way that you don't need to pull out a bunch of stuff just to get to the one thing. There's no like big setup. I don't have to pull everything out just to make coffee. Everything is just easy and ready to go. Um, so like the heater, I wanted it to just be simple and easy. Basically though, the heater's just there just to kind of take the edge off in the morning. It's such a game changer to be able to have a little bit of a heat. I mean, I'm not going to be snow camping in this thing, but in the desert, it's cold in the mornings and you want to have a little heater just to kind of take some of the edge off in the morning and get going and not have to be wanting to not get out of the covers. So this is a drawer right here. This is where I have all my main... Um, the main stuff I need to get to, like snack foods for eating, or my coffee, my protein drink. And then this is a compost bin right here. So if I'm cutting up food right here, I can just slide food right on into here. 
and it kind of catches food so like if anything kind of falls off it doesn't land down in here where it's <clears throat> super hard to clean up oh this thing right here is where my tripod goes for my videos I'd like to invite you to check out the rest of my channel. I'm heading out on a long epic trip with Odyssey. So subscribe, get notified, and be part of my tribe. You'll find my very first blog is already out. So you can follow my solo female adventures and other building and design projects and be inspired to feel like a kid again. I've got a fan here. Everything is run on this, <clears throat> this little device right here. This is what I like to call the command center. I have it between the two front seats so I can keep track of all the numbers and see what I need to do to adjust. It's a thousand watt hours. So there's so many different wires that I actually had to organize my wires because I have to pull them in and out to make adjustments. For example, this is actually connected to the van outlet and I make a, I change it out from AC fridge and reconnect it to the van in the event that I need to just run the fridge off the van if the van is actually running and then be able to allow the jackery to catch up. Then when it comes to input I might have to plug in to the van if I'm driving at night especially or the solar panel plugs into this Anderson connector. So if you do get a solar panel with this setup, you will need an Anderson connector to connect the MC4s to this. And if I'm really in a pinch, I can just plug into this spot right here with an AC wall outlet to really charge her up really fast. But you cannot I called the Jackery company, you cannot have these plugged in at the same time. So you can't have the sun plus the van charging it. You can only choose one or the other. Here's where I plug in my water pump, which I don't want to have left on during the day. And then I can either just turn it off this way and you can kind of hear the pump come on or just unplug it because I'm still charging my cell phones or running some other thing like the fan. This is from the solar panel. I'm getting 42 watts here in the shade. I usually get about 80 watts out of my 100 watt Renoji panel. Everything you can find in this van video, you can find in a link in the description below, or I'll tell you where else I bought it. The compressor fridge pulls a maximum of 60 watts, and I find that as long as the outside temperature isn't above 80 degrees, then the this little baby can charge up the fridge and keep it pretty much at 100% with the solar. I learned that size doesn't matter on these compressor fridges, whether it's a 20 liter fridge or a 60 liter fridge, the wattage isn't that much different. It's a 60 watt fridge and it's a 60 liter fridge. So that was a super game changer. I kind of thought, what am I doing getting a giant fridge like this for a minivan? But then I thought, that, the fridge is everything. Like the fridge makes all the difference. I mean, I've got enough food in here and enough food stored underneath my bed to make it so I could stay for 14 days at some middle of nowhere BLM site and not have to go recharge. because I have 36 gallons of water, 12 gallons of drinking water, a half gallon a day is what I think I drink. And so that's like 26 days of water, drinking water. And I got 24 gallons on the roof. Of regular washing water. I was trying to save money by connecting these four six gallon water tanks together, but in hindsight, I would just get, spend the money and get an RV tank. You fill it up here with the hose. They're painted black, so they are solar heated and I don't need to use propane sometimes. This gauges how much water is in there. If we're empty, you can kind of see the water level. And then when I open it up, that takes out some of the air bubbles. So I move this to adjust the air bubbles 
so we can get a correct reading on the water level. And the hose just runs on through the hatchback along with the cables from the solar panel down the back to the pump that is stored beneath the bed. And then I have my plants back here. I've got some basil and some aloe that I use on my face, the basil for cooking. And I'm just testing out some kale because kale seems to like grow in any environment. Like it can do winter or super cold or super hot. It seems like kale can do. So I'm gonna see if the kale will survive the heat of a fan. <laughs> This shelf right here was the idea that I could pull out stuff from the fridge if my countertop's all full, I can put stuff up in here. Or it's kind of like, I call it my overflow shelf because I find that like in a small space like this, you just kind of throwing up stuff on the bed and you just, things pile up there and all you want to do is go to bed, but you're too tired to just put it all away. So you just throw it all up there and deal with it tomorrow. <laughs> it's, it's how I like to do it. So this is my gear hammock and the gear hammock is just great for being able to put layers that you can throw on in the morning. And then I've got these shoe organizers up here. So like I can do, I have my little uh, beanies here. So I can like just throw those on if it's chilly in the morning to go, be able to go out and use the restroom. I've got my paper towels in here because if you put it on a regular paper towel holder, then it just ends up rolling off in the, on, when you're driving. So then you just have paper towels fall, you know, falling out all the time. So they just, it just goes in here. My wipes are here, and then I got a little bin for washcloth. And one of my favorite things is that I've got these pictures hanging up. I find that I have moved so many times, like um, it probably at least three times a year since I was 18. So that's like, I don't know, 26 years, <laughs> 27 years, I can't even do the math, of like just moving all the time. And I find that like, I would get into a lease agreement and I would start to think, oh, maybe I'm actually gonna stay here for a while. And I would actually start to hang the pictures on the wall and really sort of move in and start rooting in. And then like the universe would be like, okay, we're done here. It's time to move on to something else. And then, so the van is like ideal for me because I don't really stay in one place. So this is the most settled in I've ever felt in my life. So I actually get to have pictures hanging on my wall that don't have to get pulled down or moved because I now have a permanent home. Anyway, this picture right here is actually done by my friend Bobby. It's a collage and she said it just reminded her, you know, of me because it's like me meditating with the bright sunshine and solstice. And then her husband Sky, his name's Sky, <laughs> he, he thought to put these little feathers up here. And um, it has a saying from Thich Nhat Hanh that says, a cloud never dies. So I, I really love that and it's perfect for my color scheme. And then this is another one that's perfect for my scholar scheme that's from another friend, my friend Alan, so she gave me that. So now I have permanent pictures hung up in my house, so that makes me happy. <laughs> so if you think this is like the best minivan that you've ever seen on YouTube, then give it a thumbs up. All right, thanks Soul Tribe. My name is Solstice Elliot. I'm 46 years old and this is my vlog where I share with you my adventures <laughs> of how I stay youthful inside and out through conscious living and personal transformation. Thanks for watching Soul Tribes. Subscribe and be part of my tribe.